Thank you guys so much. Uh, super pumped to be here. Uh, quick little six hour flight, this keynote, and take a red eye home tonight, so hustling. Um, look, I think there's a lot that I wanna cover. Uh, I see the mics here, so I definitely wanna do some Q&A during this talk as well. Uh, I've been getting some context to the audience makeup, uh, and so obviously a very entrepreneurial crowd. There's a lot going on. It seems like a good amount of you have some context for me. I'm sure some of you don't. But what I really want to speak about is really just the current state of things, right? Like the thing that I think will index for anybody in this room, whether today's your first day or you've been in it for a while, uh, whether you're in a B2B environment, a B2C environment, trying to build your personal brand, trying to sell homes, trying to start an app, uh, whatever it may be, I want to really kind of go on the things that I see that are happening that will bring the most value and then I think through Q&A, we'll go into the stuff that brings more individual value and I encourage you to be selfish when you get up here and, and ask your questions. I, I think the place to start with a healthy mix here of, of young faces and some that are not as young, uh, along with my face that is not as young, is the following, which is for the 20 year old crowd in here, the early 30 year old crowd, there's a lack of context of realizing how special the environment we are in is because it's the only one you've ever known. This is what you've grown up with. You've grown up in this environment. You've grown up with the internet. Uh, and, and there's a lack of understanding of how ridiculously big this is. On the other hand, the people that have been successful for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, there's an understanding that all this new stuff is different, but there is the cliche fear and curiosity versus the tried and true that is super interesting. And so for me, the thing that I want to really drill home in my opening statements is the following. I really need this audience to understand that we are obnoxiously fortunate to be in this position right this minute, because actually this is fun because I know there's a lot of real estate DNA here. I genuinely view what's happening on the internet right now similar to when some of the great cities, somebody bought up New York for fucking nothing. And when I mean nothing, I mean dollars. Not millions or a hundred, there was human beings who actually bought, and I don't even know, you know, this is where I wish I did a little bit better in school, but like the Louisiana purchase was a fucking steal. <laughs> And, and, and I actually genuinely think that that's what's happening on the internet right now. Now, I think it's 10 years in, the consumer internet that I'm passionate about is really only 20 years old. It was really Windows 95 that got normal people to figure out how to get onto the internet. It was AOL, right? It's really only 20 years. But the web 2.0 into social media internet is really only a decade old. And I think everybody here now, whether it's the presidential election or Brexit or the Arab Spring or something that happened in your family amongst eight people, I think everybody realizes now, unlike a decade ago when I was talking about this, that this is big shit. That this is not some little cable TV extension of main TV. This is not some fad you know, that's gonna be around for a little bit. This is the fundamental shift of how human beings interact with each other, which is the currency of our lives. And so I guess the thing that I'm trying to frame up for a lot of you right now is I don't think this room, including myself, actually understands how big of an opportunity this is in whatever you care about. You sit in this room as I do today, caring about business aspects of your life. But this goes far beyond that. I mean, we're in a world now where just 10 years ago, if you did online dating, you were weird and awkward and lived in your mom's basement and now, <laughs> and now it's the only way people do it. Like, we need to understand how big this really is because when you start understanding that this is oxygen, that this is oxygen, that this in its current form and soon contact lenses when everything is virtual reality or AR or AI or wherever it goes, that this is our currency. Literally, so many of you would struggle to function without your cell phone by your side. Would, you, would, you would not realize the detox that you would actually go through if you didn't have your phone. You run to the Apple store, run to the Apple store when you lose or break your phone. 
You cry for the four hour delay that you have to wait. <laughs> so, and, and by the way, many of you are gonna sit as I say this right now and think it's sad. I don't, I think it's evolution. I don't think it's sad. I really don't. I think it's the thing. I think it's the thing. I think people thought a lot of things were sad, like the television and the telephone and the car. People thought things were sad always when it wasn't what they grew up with, right? There's people that said, you know, they always think it's not important until it becomes mainstream. I grew, I'm 41 and grew up on the East Coast. Hip hop wasn't supposed to be a real thing. It is the main currency now. Like, like this is what always happens with humans. And so I tell you all of this because I can get into the de details of what do you do on direct message on Instagram or what does it take with work-life balance and work ethic and how do you do Facebook ads and all the cliche shit that I know you're gonna ask me but before, <laughs> but before, <laughs> but before we get into that, I really wanna get everybody, if you, I feel like if the one thing I can do for everybody, if you leave here and realize that this is all just the beginning, that it's never going back, that it's way bigger than you think. I mean, I have people email me every day selling $8 million homes from one, one Facebook ad. Like, this is real. Like, this is, we're here. Like, this is not coming. This is not your 14-year-old daughter. This is now. This is happening right now. And if you haven't quanti, if there are people in this room that haven't fully committed to being relevant in the mobile device for their business, they're basically not relevant. They're trading on the history of what got them here. You're trading on the word of mouth of the people that you've done business with in the past, but that dwindles every day. And if you have any interest, how many people in this room are actually retiring in the next five years? And I don't mean you're gonna fucking crush it and buy an island. <laughs> I mean, you're just fucking old and you're finished. <laughs> How many people? Five years, raise your hands. Love it, five, got one, two, great. For you, it's an interesting debate, right? Can you hold on to what got you here for the next five? Kind of hold on to it. It'll be diminishing returns of attention and things of that nature. There'll be other young upstarts that activate against the opportunities. But for five years, even though that's a long time, I actually think all the th stuff that I believe in the most, you could probably hold on, right? For everybody else, this is binary. You're basically in the same position right now that every person that owned a bunch of taxi medallions and black car services did the day before Uber started. For everybody else in this room except for those two lovely people who, by the way, both look pretty fucking good and I'm not so sold are completely done in five. <laughs> for everybody else, you're basically the owner of four very good bookstores in your town the day before Amazon decided to get serious. Your entire life, regardless of industry, over the next decade will be eaten up by technology. And either you're on the eating side or you're on the other side. And I don't think most people here wanna get shitted out. Right? <laughs> right? And so for me, for me, this is not fun games. This is like really important. Because you have to understand, regardless of what you do in this room, regardless, there's only one thing I'm sure of. We all trade on the same currency, and that is attention. Attention is the number one currency in our society. Before you tell me how great you are at what you do, or how great your service is, or what you do, or how nice you're fucking dressed, because this crew rolls that way. <laughs> Before you do that, you need my attention to even be able to tell me that. And if you don't have it, you fucking lost. And the attention of our society is right here. And you may think it's sad, and you may not like it, but it's the punchline. And the romance of how you want it to be, or how it used to be, is fucking irrelevant. This is reality, so now I say to myself, if we all agree that this is it, right, that this is the dominant place for the attention of our consumers, well then you gotta start looking at social media super differently, because social media, my friends, 
takes up 50% of every human being's time on this. And now all of a sudden, it's not just a nice to have or this emerging kind of thing or kind of cute. Now all of a sudden, it's the yellow pages and the billboards and the bus stop ad and the direct mail and the local commercial and the TV show if you're lucky to be one of those four realtors and all of it in one place. And here's where it gets crazy. There's no gatekeepers. There's nobody in between you and the person you're trying to reach on this platform except the platforms itself, which is why Facebook's such a big company. Got it? And so this is a mindset shift. I, I recognize that 20 to 80% of this room is not pot committed to this environment. Even the most committed young players, and when I say young, just real quick, young mentality. It's not an age thing. There's a bunch of 27 year olds running around like it's 1942. <laughs> and there's a bunch of 61 year olds that fucking try everything and are fucking pot committed. This is a mentality. So, 20 to 80% of the people in this room, like to me, they're just not pot committed. And for me, when I know something's happening, Google in the early days, which built Wine Library, Facebook and Instagram influencers right now, you know, I'm not a poker player, but I do know this. If you have the best hand, it's a good idea to go all in. And so we have a little window here. I've been doing my thing for 20 years. Not forever, but long enough to know this. I've only seen it twice. 2001 to 2003 Google, which oh by the way, Amazon and eBay built their entire businesses on the back of Google. Underpriced attention. Everything still works. Somebody raised their hand, got in line, Gary, I do direct mail and it works. Mazel tov, Rick. <laughs> I know that it can still work. I just also know that you can do Facebook ads as direct mail and convert four times more. So you spend $10,000 for X, and I can spend $10,000 for four X's. It's not about what doesn't work or works anymore, it's what's underpriced and what's overpriced. <laughs> Television commercials can work, it's just not fun to spend a million dollars on them today compared to 1974 when we didn't have remote controls and actually fucking watched them. <laughs> so this is what I think about, this is what I trade on, and we all know it's going only in one direction. The number one job dream of every 13 to 16 year old in America is to be a YouTuber and or an influencer. That is literally what they want to be in their lives. This is now over, that's it. The amount of people that don't have cable is staggering. The amount of people that will never get to page 106 in a magazine to see your ad is staggering. Your car's gonna drive your anywhere you want to go for you. It's happening now, this isn't coming. Get a new Tesla, shit does all of it. Like, this is real. And so, what I don't think people know, and why I brought up the five year question is, if you think back to 10 years ago, we're just getting the first iPhone. Yeah, guys, 10 years ago, None of this shit existed. YouTube and Facebook are babies and are like for very small niches. We don't have smartphones yet. Like where do you think this is going? So what I'm fearful of is while you can sit and debate if you should be doing Facebook or Instagram influencers or Snapchat or have a blog or sort of vlog or do a podcast, while you sit and debate this minor leagues shit, which is right now the major leagues, the majors are coming. What are you gonna do about Alexa skills when people are like, Alexa, I wanna go to open houses and Alexa tells you which open houses you're going to. And if you're not playing there, where are you? Right? Like, where, where are you? Because what I'm most worried about is I'm worried about all of your digital DNA. If you're pushing up against this shit, you're really gonna get ran over in the next decade. You'll never be good at augmented reality if you weren't good at Facebook. I mean, right? I mean, right? I mean, like, how are you ever going to be ready for the next shit if you're still fighting this and like super pumped to like spend your money on a fucking bench ad? <laughs> so, I guess where my energy is clearly going, since I never really know what the fuck I'm going to talk about, is, is, 
I think the stakes are higher than you think. And I think that when you wake up in three, two years and see that Ralph Lauren Polo has gone out of business, and when you wake up in two or three years and see that you know, the GameStop is out of business, like when you start seeing it, and you're seeing it, right? And you could fe- feel it. I mean, any of you that are, have you been to a mall lately? I mean, the shit is sad. <laughs> right? And like, and what, and, what, and what does happen? There's a lot of youngsters in here. Let me go into a 15 year innovation talk. What does happen when we have self-driving cars and we actually enjoy our commutes and all of a sudden prime real estate is not as prime as it used to be because all of a sudden now on 15 minute commute when you can do everything in it, all of a sudden becomes a more interesting thing for humans to do. You guys know macro trends. The cities in this country over the last 30 years were dead and they've resurged over the last decade because the youth is more interested in living in the cities because the dynamics have changed. What happens when people actually figure out it's not a good idea to own a home? Because the math is super intriguing and the game's changing. And so I, I really want to push everybody to understand this is big stakes. This isn't, how am I going to build my personal brand on Instagram, Gary? I don't give a fuck, Ralph. <laughs> this is... Do you actually understand the era that you're living through? Like this is the industrial revolution. This is like getting electricity. This is big shit. And this is big shit not only in your business life but in the dynamics of who we are. All this stuff going on wherever you are on politics, this is not him or her. This is the dynamics of media in our society. This is the dynamics of all of us having media 24 seven. This is what's happening, we're about to change. And so bringing it back to the micro business, that means a lot of money is about to be made and a lot of money is about to be lost. And what I haven't figured out is how many of you are willing to draw a line in the sand and say that you hate all this technology stuff and aren't willing to put in the 20 hours to read and watch videos to educate yourself out of your raw emotion when it's gonna wipe you out. And I think that's awesome. I think you deserve to go directly out of business if you're not willing to put in the work. <laughs> I do, I do. If, if, you, if you're wrong about what's about to happen and you weren't willing to put in the work, you deserve to lose. And so that's what's gonna happen. And so I would say this, please, please understand that this is the beginning. We are definitely, definitely going to live, at this point in my opinion, in an augmented reality world, which means what you see happening with Snapchat and Instagram where you have your face and then puppies and fucking Coachella things and all that stuff, that's about to go super far. You're all gonna wear, you're all going to wear contact lenses in 20 years where you're seeing the real world, an augmented world, and a virtual world on an everyday basis, blended, always and forever. That's what's coming. And so look, I'm just as pissed as everybody else. (laughs) And I'm not looking forward to the robots killing all of us. (laughs) But they're gonna win. (laughs) And so we might as well enjoy our time now. (laughs) And I'd like you to be on the side of it instead of against it. I'm not super special. The reason I'm gonna win at the highest levels is I don't fight reality. I'm brutal in my complete lack of romance of how it should be and my complete investment into how it actually is. Right? And that's the, right? (laughs) Guys, do you know how pissed I was that social media came along? I had digital media figured out. I was winning on email and Google AdWords. Like I'd won. Like, it was devastating. I was like, fuck, this is gonna work. You know? And, and by the way, and you're gonna see it. You'll watch 53-year-old me completely be obsessed with VR, AR, AI, or whatever else that is about to be invented. I have no idea that I'm gonna believe your attention will be. And you're all gonna actually see it. The first time, nobody knew who I was. This time, I'm so associated with this stuff 
When you see me in seven years and whatever the Facebook feed of the day is and I, the video is gonna be like, you're still doing Facebook, you fucking asshole? <laughs> and you're gonna be like, what? Isn't that what he believes in? No, I believe in trading attention in the day that we actually live in. I believe making my actions allow me to sell what I wanna sell. And when I say sell, I mean selling a home, a pair of sneakers, or raising awareness for Crohn's disease because my brother AJ has it, or raising money for the PTA, or whatever it may be. Selling or bringing awareness to whatever matters to me, and as we all know, what matters to you today was different than five years ago, and in five years it's gonna be different again, and that's just the way it is, and so I implore you, and I see a line starting to gather, so if you wanna start gathering in line, because I don't think I'll get to all of them, this is a good time to start moving. I implore you to understand, yes, I believe in social media, B, I think that's a slang term for the current state of the internet. You know, people call YouTube and LinkedIn social media sites, they are not. As a matter of fact, there's only one social media site left, it's called Twitter. All the other ones are just content push. There's no back and forth really in a lot of places anymore, right? So that's just a word, don't get hung up on it. Everything you see that's happening with me is because I'm trading attention, I'm, I believe in sound. I think every person here needs to wrap their head around the following statement, which is this. You were a media company first, and then whatever else you do for a living. You have to start understanding that you're a media company. Now, that may mean, and for a lot of you, it means that that's you, you. For others, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be you, right? The Huffington Post wasn't Ariana Huffington in every post, every, like you could be the platform, but you better realize you're in the media business. Because the cost of being in the media business is now zero in distribution opportunity, in production, it's so low, it's so low. D-Rock and I did an episode of Daily V, our vlog, uh, yes, that came out today. My latest vlog right now on YouTube was all filmed on this, you know? So I don't wanna hear your bullshit excuses that you don't have a fucking camera or the lighting and all this, everybody's in the fucking excuse business. Every one of you is running through your head right now of why you're not in the media business or why you're not doing this and it's all bullshit. It's because you have decided not to. It's binary. This is simple. Either you're in it or you're not. Because once you make the mental decision that you're in it, maybe you invest in a nice camera instead of another fucking suit. <laughs> yeah. I think it's on. How are you? Do you guys have to turn this on or let's see what happens? There we go. There we go. Hey Gary, Austin. I'm Rich from Austin. Uh, number one, I'm a retired attack helicopter pilot for the Marines and I brought a patch for you. Awesome. For you and D-Rock, can I bring these to you? All right, so real quick, I know there's a line. So, I work full time. I don't have time to do what I want to do yet. My plan is this. Uh, another pilot and I want to get together and we want to go around to successful veterans in all types of industries that we know and interview them for free. All right, I don't need your fucking money. I don't need anything. I want to show veterans who are gonna transition because it's incredibly difficult. And there's another problem. There's also a, a group of veterans that think they're entitled to shit. All right, yeah, and we need to right. dispel both those rumors. I think that's right. So, what I want to do is go interview and just paint the picture, like, hey, here's what you can be. The only thing that's not allowing me to execute, and I'm overanalyzing Danny for sure, uh, is that I want them to be authentic. It's well, your take the risk. Everybody's scared to waste time when time is your number one asset that you have. So go interview Charles. And then three fourths of the way, you're like, "Fuck, this guy's so full of shit," yeah. and don't show it. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's right. So what I mean is, I guess part of the vulgarity is authenticity is what yeah. attracted me to you. I was like, "Holy shit, I've never seen a guy like this." Yeah. And I don't want them to hide behind whatever logo they work for or whatever. Yeah. And them not to see the real picture. I want them to know, like, "Hey, there's still that guy or gal in uniform there, right there." Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure. I don't How about financially? To... Can you do it now? Because there's, I have a really good idea, that's why I'm asking. Uh, 
I collect retirement, so that's good. And then my full-time job is great. I would have limited time, but my partner and I want to go uh, probably three or four interviews a month uh, and just yeah. fly out to wherever and, and do what we got to do. Great. So, I mean, A, your ability to get a sponsor for this is very high. Like, most businesses can't get a sponsor on spec, but because of the subject matter, Literally, if you just cold emailed the top 1,000 corporations in America, you'd probably make so much sponsorship money, you'd be like, fuck. Anyway, <laughs> I, 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 think, I think, you know, I mean, I, I don't think that's valid what you said. Okay. Just go do the interview. Do your best. Okay. Like, maybe get an extra sponsor to hire somebody to vet people so they can really vet. Yeah. But, like, that's not scary. Okay. Because then you just don't have to show it. Yeah. You know, it would suck to fly somewhere and it didn't work out, but you can hire an intern or a $38,000 a year employee who could do ridiculous research on anybody to get you to third and a half base and then you watch something for 10 minutes and make a gut decision. Got it. Thank awesome. you so much. You're welcome. What's up, bro? How are you? Um, so you did a video on sales versus marketing? Yes. About a month ago. Yes. So um, my question to you, and you alluded to it earlier when you said, you know, what happens if People decide they don't want to buy a house anymore. Um, I'm in direct sales, been in direct sales for seven years, and I know a lot of people in this room are. My question is, where in the future, uh, say five to ten years in the future from now, where are you pushing your chips? Are you pushing it into sales and sales, or are you pushing it into marketing? The uh, reason I'm asking is, you know, with Amazon and your boy Jeff Bezos um, and Tesla, they don't do tons and tons of they don't spend tons and tons of money on marketing or on advertising. I don't think, I don't know. Sorry. They do. They do, okay. So my question, I guess, is... They both work. They both work? They both work. Right, they They're both the work. They're the two foundations of how shit gets done. You either retarget people, affiliate, all the tactical shit that sells something, yeah. or what is much more interesting, which is people don't even realize why they bought the shit they're wearing right, right. now, because they were marketed to. Right. Marketing, marketing and branding is just grown-up sales. So in the future, when people are able to buy anything they want to and just go through uh, an experience on their phone, yes. right? Does that cut out the direct sales portion of it? Of course it could. Okay, so where are you putting your money in five to 10 years for like the car industry, the home industry? Right, I mean, I think, look, I think, who, I think what the internet does and technology does is it squeezes the middleman out because the internet is the middleman. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, I think I'm putting my money on whoever's making shit because they're going to be able to, at a much higher level, do the sales and marketing themselves and not be at the mercy of the middle. However, that market will always exist because guess what? A lot of people aren't good at sales and marketing, right? right? So there's, I wouldn't worry, you're a young dude, I wouldn't worry like, your sales skills translates forever. To anything, right. 100%. I just started the business, that's why I'm... But I would say stuff. that, I would say that make sure you don't become too transactional because that's when you become your most vulnerable. Got it. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Gary, what's up? Life is good, my man. Hey, Gary, what's going on? Uh, Danny Gould, uh, selling Silicon Valley. It's my D-Rock right here, Dusty. Uh, so I have a YouTube channel right now, Facebook channel. Uh, really right now, I'm, I'm doing a lot of, of just daily vlogs, yep. right? And so you, know, you talk about you know, reverse engineering and, and bringing value, disproportionate value to those that you're, that you're trying to market to as yep. opposed to what you expect in return. And yep. you know, right now, my business is doing really well, my real estate business, right? But, I'm looking at this vlog thing as more of a, a, a long-term, like, you know, personal brand, celebrity type of uh, endeavor, right? right? So then, you know, I, I understand how to bring value to my community, per se, but then, like, how, as a daily vlogger, do I actually bring value to people that I don't even know? That right. or in, that are not in real estate, right? Or that are not in right. real estate or have I, no interest in real estate. I, I think... Uh, I think you've only got one move to really be successful, which is to not pander to the camera and to live your true life and see if people give a fuck. <laughs> That's the right answer, right? Because, because either they are or they aren't, but the thing that you need to trade on is your truth because that's the thing that's scalable because it's always there. You know how fun it is for me to always just always have to be me? It's, it's super exhausting to try not, not be yourself and it doesn't scale, and people taste it. 
So the reason reality TV worked was it was a little further than acting, but it's still full of shit, which is why vlogging's better than reality TV. And so, and I think the, thing, the people that you see pop are really in their zone. They're not trying to become a celebrity per se. Right. They want what celebrity brings, which is celebrity is the number one arbitrage in our society. Like it is the number one arbitrage in our society. It's leverage at scale. But I think when people try to pander to it, it comes off. So I, what my biggest advice for you, man, is to just live your actual life. I think the biggest problem for the modern young male entrepreneur vlogger personality is they're, they're fronting to a lifestyle that isn't always true to the reality of what they're living and then it just gets convoluted, right? It's like, right. you know, like people are starting to already get called out for like making pretend they're taking private flights, but they're not. That's hit this, right? Yeah. So, so I, I, I would give you a really good piece of advice from somebody who I think really knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Just live it. Just live your fucking life. Like that's, you'll do much better. Sweet, thank you. Take care, Dusty. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is a dream. Um, first, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you from the bottom of my heart and just express my deepest gratitude for all the content you put out. And just since I started listening to you a couple months ago, just how big of an impact you've made, not only in my business, but my life. I think everyone here can attest to that. And I just want to give you a huge round of applause. For that. Thank you. One thing that I've really been paying attention to you with lately is about don't listen to what I say, watch what I do. Yeah. Um, and so for me, in business, what I'm trying to do right now is just really scale and build a great culture and build a great team. Awesome. So I want to know, what do I need to do to earn the opportunity to fly out to VaynerMedia for the day and just be a fly on the wall and shadow you? Because I just want to learn and I, I just want it so bad and I'm going to do whatever it takes. Done. Fuck yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going, Gary? My right, you don't get it if you don't ask. Uh, my name's Mike. That was pretty freaking awesome what you just did for that guy. He's probably gonna change his life. Uh, so, I'm a real estate agent with Intero. I just wanna know what's... I wanna... Probably my favorite thing about the real estate industry is the team dynamics, right? So, so what's the future for real estate agent? You think we're gonna be taken out by... I don't, I don't, don't think, think so. so. I, humans are not going anywhere until the robots kill us. <laughs> so, so I, I, I think, the, I think when, so here's how I think about it. I think there's a tidal wave of technology coming. I framed that up, right? But I don't think it wipes out humans. I think it wipes out humans that decide not to get their surfboard and jump on it. Right. So I think what's gonna happen to real estate agents is, first of all, the real estate industry is fascinating because it reminds me, you know, the tech industry, the startup tech world now reminds me a lot of real estate now that I've been in it because the real estate industry has cycles when it's so good that losers win. And, and it's just true. It's just true. And so, but, but it's not just the real estate industry. Wall Street has that. The tech industry has it. But it is extreme in real estate uh, because the crashes are extreme, right? right? So, so I think I would tell you far more scary to me than what's happening with technology and real estate is people's blind belief that it's always gonna be good and they over leverage themselves. I'm just so fascinated by, and when I say over leverage, there's people that buy up stuff and you're over leveraged and you have debt. And then there's just people that are just selling and making commissions but they're over leveraging themselves in the way they're treating their lifestyle. Like they think it's a good idea to buy shit and not save money as if the market will always be good and then when the market's not good, then it's not good. Uh, so I think real estate is fine. I don't think there's any major stuff happening other than I think that the people in this room that use the new technologies to build their firm or personal brand within it are gonna disproportionately outshine people. And the people I'm most worried about are the people who have very good reputations in their market because that's always been consistent for the last 100 years that you can trade on your reputation and word of mouth. 
and I think they don't realize that the word of mouth is about to shift to only the digital environment. And so like literally, there's not even gonna be an opportunity for people to like give you the word of mouth because they're gonna be endorsing people with a share on Facebook instead of giving your name out at a barbecue. And it's gonna happen faster than people think. So that's my fear. It's the people that have tried and true reputations in their market and have seen generations before them trade on that and they got caught because they're in this moment and six years from now, there's gonna be seven upstarts, not one, that is gonna take the market from them. Appreciate it, Gary. Oh, really quickly, what's your favorite Logic 3-1 song? <laughs> <laughs> He's my favorite um, artist, that's why. Bobby Trentino, I, 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 I think, uh, I think, you know what's interesting, before I, I, it's funny, I'm thinking about the new album that he just yeah, dropped. Yeah. Let me give a different route with you. You know what I really like about him? Is why he won. And what I'm trying to get across here. Bobby and Russ and Kyle and all these characters are winning and they're gonna be the biggest hip hop artists in the world on everything I've been talking about for the last 20 minutes. Boom. Got it? Boom. That's the game. Wow. What's up, Gary? Um, so I'm 23 years old, entrepreneur. I believe it's in my DNA, and you've really made me question that. So the reason why I wanted to ask you this question, been kind of holding out, um, every one of us in this room has to battle mental strength, right? Sure. Like, when shit hits the fan, your bank accounts are negative, it's your third failure, right? Like, what do you do? So we, we hold on to the optimism, right? And that yes. comes from mental strength. 100%, especially when your optimism is blind and doesn't have practicality wired into it. So my question for you is, if you are an entrepreneur and it's in your DNA, and you listen to your intuition, and that's what gives you your, your optimism, how do you, how do you create the difference between mental strength as the source or intuition as the source? You have to make sure that your intuition is speaking, not your delusion. Right, that's the key, and that's a. And by the way, they're kissing cousins. But yeah. So, so here's what I would say. I would say that, in my delusion, I'm an athlete. Right, like I want to be. I've got competitive spirit. I'm a good team captain type. There's a lot of things there, but but going on to the playing field, I'm going to consistently lose at the highest levels and can't make a living doing it. So here's what I would say, I don't want you to, at 23, first of all, at 23, you're golden, right? You're golden because you could literally do nothing right for the next seven years and still be young as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the only piece of advice I'm gonna give you is do not collect debt. And so if you have already, and you have credit card debt or what have you, do you or don't you? I mean. Minimal. <laughs> AR is above debt, so yeah. that, you know, your balance get, is out, right? Get rid of that. Like, go work at fucking 7-Eleven. I don't give a fuck. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Never buy another thing in your life and live with nine dudes and do your entrepreneurial thing for the next decade. Cool. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. How you doing, Gary? Really good. Excited to see you, man. Thank I watch you, man. your videos all the time. Thank you. I have a brand called Next to Get. Next to get's all about taking action. Yep. Um, you can't be next to get unless you take action. Yep. So I know you love the Jets. I do. So I got you a shirt that says, next to get the New York Jets. I love it, I'll wear it, give it to me. I'm One more question. Go ahead. go ahead, go up there. Make sure they hear you. Thank you, my man. Thanks, Dan. So I know you say when you get the Jets, that's gonna be like the worst day of your life. Yes but it actually should be one of the best because then you gotta figure out yeah. how to when get them and be I next agree. to get the Super Bowl, exactly. I agree. They, they gotta be next to get the Super Bowl. Look, I think, I think the, the reason I say that is, A, there's a little truth to it. I think, for me, no question, one of the reasons I think that I'll be successful, it's really funny that you asked this question prior to the advice that I just gave. Like, for me, it sounds exciting to be 23, have no money, live in a basement for seven years and try to do your thing. I genuinely like that because I love the game. Right, I love the game. And so, um, to me, that's what a true bred entrepreneur is, which is, it has zero to do with the stuff. It has to do with the game. And so, 
this game that I made up for myself somewhere around fourth grade to buy them has been the narrative in the background for me the whole time. And so there's a little bit of that going away. But at the same token, the reason I talk about it is I don't want people to get confused. I, I, I want them to realize that if you fall in love with the journey, that is the ultimate gift in our lives. Absolutely. Because that's just, that's happiness, right? Like, like, we're spending so much time at work. Like when you actually just get practical and look at the data, the amount of time that you will all spend in your careers as a percentage to your overall time on earth is extraordinarily high. So it just, it's super important to make that something about more than dollars if you're unhappy. If you're neutral and money's there, awesome. I'm just scared of people that complain, that's all. I would tell you that 98% of my advice is for people that complain. I, why in the world would I have advice for you if you're good? Like, you're good. So one more thing I have to ask is, um, I would love to be able to meet with you and maybe you can become a mentor or a business partner. Uh, I know you can help me grow. There's no shot. I gotta ask, I gotta ask. <laughs> gotta ask. <laughs> so I just don't have you. that bandwidth. I get you. Like that dude that got lucky and get, got the first thing and is gonna come to visit Vayner, I'll see him for 4.8 4. seconds. That's all right. You know, like, and it might turn into 19 minutes or it might turn into four hours, but like, I, I never want to bullshit somebody. When, and the one thing I don't have is time. Gotcha. Time is everything. It's why, it's why the mobile device is so important. It's saving you time. time Check is, me out at Next to Get. Check me out. I will. Right. Yo, Gary, um, how are you feeling today? Phenomenal. That's great to hear. Um, it's awesome just talking to you. Thank you. I've been following your content for the last year or so. Thank you. And uh, you taught me what hustle really was. I thought yeah. I was working. I've been, I own my business for the last four years. I'm 20 years old now. So I started speaking on teen suicide prevention when I was 16. Love it. Um, after some experience I went through. And right now I'm really growing my media and I'm really focusing on being a media company. So yes. I started podcasting. And the question I have is, with daily vlogging. Yes. So this might also, DRock might jump in, but I'm logistically thinking of daily vlogging and what's the process of getting, of your daily vlog getting up on YouTube? Do you post it the day after you film it? Is we've, it the next we've, week? We've done a bunch of stuff. I think the first couple of weeks, it took us like three days. Then we went through a period of, a long period of doing it the next day. Okay. Uh, and now we're like on a two day delay, um, even though we have more people. I mean, DRock went through a hardcore year of like filming the whole thing and right. then having to edit it and getting it out the next day. Um, yeah. I think you can do anything. I mean, I think, okay. I think you, need, you can't cripple yourself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my buddy Casey stopped vlogging, so right. the next day I was like, I'm gonna vlog every day to pick up the thing. But then literally in my vlog yesterday, I was like, you know, the summer's coming. I feel like I need a little more time with my family and don't want to be thinking about producing content, so maybe I won't. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's about reverse engineering what you can get done. And for me, you know, only two years ago, three years ago, there was three people on my team making content. You know, it took me four years to build up VaynerMedia to have one person work with me on my content. Prior to that, it was just me. And now I'm at 15. I mean, you build. You build right, and you do course. different things. And so I think, um, I think the process is as fast as you fucking can. Okay, so do you think, it's valu it's, do you think a daily vlog is valuable enough over something like sales? Because I do a lot of sales to high schools, colleges, conferences. This is the classic branding versus sales, right? Right. I think you need to sell at the most minimum to make you whole for whatever you need, pay your bills, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that, but, and then invest as much as you can in building your brand. So media comes after sales. You would recommend? You gotta pay your fucking bills, bro. Exactly. <laughs> well, right now I'm living at home. Well, then you're fucking so. smart. <laughs> so to me now, it just becomes a question of how much money you want. Exactly. My big recommendation is, listen, I only give advice that I took myself. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of that. I took over my family liquor store business and I grew up from a three at this, at this window that I'm talking about from a three to a $45 million business in my early 20s, right? I'm 27 years old, I built a $45 million business and I was paying myself $37,000 a year. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't the typical dude that needed money as a leverage to get girls. Exactly, I don't, and that's the thing is I don't need a lot of money right now, so I'm wondering, 
whether to build myself up as a speaker of without course. really worrying about the sales of aspect course. of it. Of so, course. Right. And as you say that, I think that's of what course. Gary Vee would say. <laughs> I hear your head, I hear your voice in my head sometimes, and I think Gary Vee would say that. <laughs> sometimes I dream about you answering my, actually I had, a, I had a question earlier, last time I dreamed about you answering my question. I guess. So, <laughs> so your content is so effective. <laughs> now, off of that little story, mm -hmm. watch what I'm doing, not what I'm saying. Yes, yes, got it. Got it. Thank you so much. How much time? Twenty. Good. Twenty. Hi, Gary V. Um, first, I want to say thank you again. Everything, all of your podcasts, all of your uh, videos on YouTube are kind of my real education. Um, college was just the paperwork. Um, I am a marketing manager for a nonprofit organization, which is a unique position that I'm very fortunate to have. Now, part of my job, and it's a new job, is um, I'm building up our presence on social media. I have three different target audiences. Mm -hmm. I have the women we serve, our vol the volunteers, and donors. Yep. My question to you is, does it make sense to use one platform, or each Oops. platform? But one account? Right, one account yes. to target all three? Yes. Okay, instead of focusing on one platform per group. Yes, because the way we consume content in social is not binary. The content finds who it needs to find. It's not email 1996 where people open up 90% of their email. Got it? It's just one feed. We don't even know who the fuck it's coming from. You're looking at the content, not the little logo that's delivering it. Got it? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hi, Barry. My, my name is John, first of all. It's a dream come true. Six months ago, I wrote it down. I'm gonna meet G Gary Vaynerchuk. And here I am right now. Good shit, bro. It's, it's awesome. And then I met Danny Morell. I want to thank Danny real quick for having that vision and clarity for making it happen. Uh, I'm with Intero Real Estate. So what's up, guys? <laughs> it's, it's actually my first week in real estate. And uh, I'm super excited. I'm door knocking. Um, my question is... What were you doing last week? What's that? What were you doing last week? I was calling and door knocking and hustling. Love it. And uh, I'm, I'm doing Facebook Live, I'm doing videos, all, all the stuff. But my question is, uh, when your parents is saying, when you bring the clients or talk about the clients that, uh, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, oh, you have to make sure all this stuff is correct, oh, what if it embarrasses us, what would you say to that? Well, I would say your parents are probably right a lot more than you realize. Here's, right. If I was in real estate for the first week, right. uh, <laughs> what I would probably do, so like I'm now actually super interested in watching one of your Facebook lives because, <laughs> because what I'm curious about is are you faking it till you make it or are you documenting the journey of a young man trying to learn the industry? My intuition is number one. <laughs> what I would do, what I would do if I was in week one, how many, what team were you on again? Let me see all the people that wooed again. <laughs> me, if I was standing there, I would straddle up real close to all those wooing people and spend, and spend one year shutting the fuck up and listening. Yeah. Me. Because then you'll learn, you'll taste. Then you'll know what to say. You're not gonna lose your charisma and showmanship. You're, you're a baby. You just don't know what the fuck you're talking about yet. Uh, I have a follow-up question. Should I keep doing Instagram uh, stories, just documenting and... Dude, I think it's far more interesting. It was the advice I gave that other young man. Tell your truth. A lot of, you know, you may lose a lot of people who are like, I'm not going with this dude on his third week. <laughs> But if you're actually running a marathon, in six years, you could have everybody who's buying their first house. Thanks, Gary, appreciate it. I, I, think, I think, you know, now I'm gonna pander to the crowd. How many people over 40? Right, so the thing that I think is super interesting for me, for everybody that just raised your hands, nothing's changed. Like, like technology is not gonna allow bad things to all of a sudden populate. 
right? Like, like tried and true is tried and true. All that technology is doing is exposing things. You guys haven't changed because of all this technology. You've just been exposed. Hey Gary, hey. thank you so much for being here and Danny, I'm really excited. I saw a video that you're doing the other day about success and that somebody who's an entrepreneur and makes $150,000, that's a, a, a lot higher form of success than someone who's in a, you know, nine to five, not doing what they want, if making the same happy. amount of money. Yeah, that's, they're happy. It's not yeah. about being a job or an entrepreneur. My, my trading desk is on happiness. Uh -huh. My point there was, if you're making 150,000 a year at being a lawyer and you're not pumped, or you could be making 98,000 a year selling slime on Instagram, but it's your dream because you love making slime with your eight-year-old, I think it's a worthwhile debate. I'm so, just blown away by people that are literally willing to binarily be dramatically less happy for an extra $8,000. So, so they can go on a fucking cruise, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my question was based on, um, on that delineation yep. there. Yeah. Um, what, what, how should people be thinking about their success? You also talk about natural born entrepreneurs, like as much as you would want to be LeBron, you know, that takes a certain amount of natural yeah. talent. So what, what can you speak about on success so, and, and so, the role that patience plays so in let, that? Let's go, instead of that, what are you asking me? What, what's your situation? My situation is I'm, I'm new, right? I'm listening to everything that you're saying. Uh, days sometimes don't go well, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on Gary Vee, see what he has to say, try to get some golden nuggets, and I wanna know, a big thing that you talk about is patience, and that role that that plays when you're young and you're starting, and, uh, and so I wanted to kinda hear what you say so I could kind of like, who, who, like put that in. Who are you playing this game for is super interesting to me. Uh -huh. So one of the tough things that a lot of young people in this room have is they've got chips on their shoulder because they want to prove their mom wrong, because they want to prove that their older sister isn't the only star in the family. You know, where I'm going with this is, very simply, almost everybody in this room is living their lives to the judge and jury of somebody outside of themselves. And that fucking blows. And so where I'm going with you is, there's a lot of questions I'd like to ask, but the yeah, first yeah. one is, for what and for who? The reason I win, you know, there's a scene, it's really funny because I was born in Russia in the, in the former Soviet Union. There's a scene in Rocky for where Drago loses at the end, but he takes the mic and he's like, fuck you, he talks in Russian, I understood <laughs> it. He was basically saying, fuck you, Russia, that wanted me to beat this America. I was fighting for myself. I was in this ring for myself. The reason I'm winning, young man, is because I'm in this ring for myself. I don't give a fuck what anybody says about me. Nobody. Uh -huh. Now, that, that, that is a bless, that has nothing to do with me. That has to do with my DNA compounded by extremely strong parenting and environment, right? So I don't say that as I'm cool, I'm telling you my truth, and I'm trying to get as many people cl as close to that as possible, because I don't have the answers for you, but what I can tell you is, if you do it for yourself, if you're judging yourself, shit gets real easy. I have zero bad days, because I'm in that binary place of knowing my intent and doing what I do, and then the only thing that can drag me down is outside forces around the health of my family and friends, and luckily for me, the far majority of those days aren't gonna be the critical days where I lose some of them, right? That's it, man, like what are you trying to do? Is it about the money? Is it about proving something to somebody? Because if you're trying to prove it to yourself, you have your whole life to do that. You have your whole life to do that. Guys, life, as a lot of you know, I love football. Let's call it 80 years, it's getting better, even closer to 90. Just break them down in four quarters. Like, do you really, this is why I hate flashy 25 year old young entrepreneurs. Do you really want to be up 21 nothing in the second quarter and lose 37 to 28? Because <laughs> you sure are acting like it. So that's what I'm intrigued by, bro. Um, so what am I, are you asking me the question or that's it? <laughs> I mean, I'm not confused, man. I'm, I'm, uh, ask, I'm asking so, you to figure out who the yeah, judge is. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Last question. I do a, a video every day, 30 seconds or less, with people on their favorite quotes. Can I do them with you before we leave? Yep. Yes. All right, thank you. 
Sure. Hi, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Didn't realize I was coming to Right Hook Con. So. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. So I'm not a real estate agent. I own my own clothing company. My company turned five yesterday. So Congrats. Thank you. Um, we're a wholesale company, and my target audience actually is women over 40. Okay. Um, and we... <laughs> and we do Yeah! I'm a female over 40, <laughs> motherfuckers! <laughs> We're wholesale and we sell to a bunch of different stores. Um, we are very successful in wholesale. And are you doing are you doing direct to consumer yet? We have a very small part of our business, only about five percent of our business that's sold .com. Are you but trying our to grow that? Yes, our challenge is our demographic buying online. I know Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook, the younger generation, they buy online. That's you know, not you're a completely problem. out of your mind, right? Like, <laughs> completely. Well, we we've, we've done surveys. We've asked our customers. Fuck your surveys. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what the best platform is for my age range. Facebook. And converting that to a Facebook store. Uh, or no. selling it. Driving them to your dot com. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know how much fashion is sold to 40 to 60 year old women in e commerce in this country? A lot. <laughs> okay, because yes. you just told me your demo is not doing that. Do you know what I mean? You're just. You might not know how to do that. That's my challenge. I don't know no how to shit. do on, <laughs> on, on the wholesale side, yes, we know that part. But on the retail end of it, it's just trying to figure yeah. out what best avenue to. You need, to, you need to, to invest your money into bringing somebody who has a dot com, mm -hmm. direct to consumer, fashion female background, mm -hmm. and let her or him be your director of e-com, direct to consumer, and go do your thing. You're, you're, in a, you're, you're making it convenient to your strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. which is the quickest way to go out of business. And that's not You know what I mean? Plan. Yeah. So I think you know that, I can yeah. tell. So I, I, you know, I don't know your business, mm -hmm. but I would make a little less money and immediately hire somebody who can flat out and call references, go hire somebody who's sold mm -hmm. you know, to that lovely lady on the <laughs> internet, <laughs> you know, and then hire them and then, scythe, and then, and then when you hire them, don't go, okay, great, I got Ricky or Sally and go do your thing. You get real fucking close and you siphon that information out because it's your fucking company mm -hmm. and you don't want that to grow to 38% of your business and then Rick's got all the fucking leverage. Right. Okay. Okay, guys, last, yeah, last question, guys, last question. Okay. Sorry, everybody in line. Yeah, sorry. He's a real dick. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> My name's Delisir. Uh, thank you for uh, the motivation. I actually think uh, I look up to you because I'm also an immigrant, and you give me a good example that success can actually be reached no matter where you come from. So thank Dude, you. Dude, immigrants have the advantage. Yeah. Absolutely. They really do. I really. I. I just, and by the way, American-born people dominate. But the, the the advantage is, we know the alternative. My kids are fucking gonna be losers. <laughs> Like, you know, you know, it's just hard when you've got it and don't work for it. So I, I'm glad that's the case, but um, I want you to realize how good of an advantage you actually have. Yeah, actually, uh, my youngest brothers actually tell me all that time, all the time. So they say, um, well, you just work harder because you're an immigrant and you have the immigrant mentality. I and you should well, look them dead in the face and say, that's right, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, act I'm actually recording it, so you'll, you'll hear it for sure. And then also tell them that you're also working smarter. Now what, dick? It's all right here. I um, hate that fucking argument. Gary, yeah, it's cool, you hustle, but I work smart. Me too, dick face, now what? Yeah, I do both. <laughs> so here, here's my situation. I, uh, I recently started a business on my own. Good for you. Um, thank you. And so it's been going pretty well. It's a retail business. Um, it's a brick and mortar business, and I know that you actually talk about how brick and mortars are possibly going out of business soon. If their economics are too tied into unrealistic leases and they don't have alternatives, right? So it's, remember how I said like everything, everything in media can work, it's what's underpriced and overpriced? Retail is not gonna die, people. It's just, retails are not gonna pay $87 a square foot when the way we buy now, it should be 61. Got it? Got it. And instead of spending their money on fixtures, they may allocate 25% of their space for you to drink coffee or for a band to be there. They're gonna need to draw, they're gonna have to change. 
This is all about change. So that's, that's what's on my mind. Keep going. So my thing is I have an opportunity now because the business is doing well to expand into a second location, which is also a brick and mortar. But my Let dilemma, me give you a good piece of advice. Yeah. Make pro whatever projections you have or whatever your business is currently doing, just siphon out 20% of it. Like just make pretend you lost 20% of it and if the math works, then go for it. Okay. Got it? Got it. Just anticipate the decline. The 20% decline, is that over a, That's my specific... intuition that the macroeconomic climates of what retail is doing will affect you. You may not even ever feel that. You may feel 50% of it, but you can't be blind. Well, what do you sell? I sell uh, fitness supplements. Yeah, fuck, man. Like, <laughs> like, like, people buy that shit at scale yeah. on the internet. Yeah. So, like, don't get fucking crazy. Like, you know, like, keep that in mind. Yeah, so I sell this stuff online as well. So my, my question was whether I should take the second brick and mortar store and uh, continue doing business online or if I should just take that full lump of money that I would invest into a brick and mortar store which got me here in the first place and just take it all and invest it in my e-commerce. What gets you somewhere is irrelevant to where you're going. Wow. Got, it. got it? Perfect. So I think you know the answer. You don't need to pay homage to that fucking store that got you there. Gotcha. Okay, um, and then this, this other question too is, is kind of interesting. No, 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 that's it. Oh. No, it's not fair to I told you he was a dick. Yeah, all, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, all right, all right, well, thank you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. You know what? Gold digger, because I like that. One more, go. Thank you. Is it all right if I that's get a picture it. with you, Gary? Good. You made me, uh, you helped me realize that I need to quit my job selling cars so I can actually go into business for myself. So I'd like to thank you for that. And uh, I'd really like come a picture with you. Come on, no, get up, get up here. Come on. You can come up and you can ask. Go ahead. I'll. Oh, oh, you're taking a picture, got it, okay. Oh. <laughs> nice to meet you, good luck. Hi, hi Gary, oh my gosh. Okay, I came down here from Northern California just to say thank you for all of the, all the content you put out, because I found you when I was at a really uh, tumultuous part of my life, and my life just being like fully accountable and just just not going for perfect, just, just getting my, my, uh, my self, just getting it done and just making micro adjustments has just quantifiably made my life so much better and I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. You. Oh, can I take a selfie too? <laughs> I like your skirt. Awesome. Give Gary a round of applause, everybody. Thank you so much. So, hold on. I gotta, I, I gotta tell you guys a little story. You know, it was, it was kind of awesome because, uh, um, you know, I, l last night, I, I highly respect this guy, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because, you know, I had this illusion that, I mean, I know he says he works hard, but... I mean, I didn't really understand how hard he works. So I'm thinking if I'm going to do an event, I'm going to fly in the night before, you know, relax, hang out for a little bit, wake up the next day, maybe I'll do a little workout, you know what I'm saying? And yep. maybe do some work in the room. And then when it's time for me to speak, then I come up and speak. You know, that, that's normal, right? Well, last night I noticed on his Instagram story, I'm like, fuck, he's not on an airplane yet. <laughs> And then this, this morning, you know, and I'm stressing, I was like, the money went through, right? Because I mean, <laughs> there was a lot of money, right? And I'm stressing, I'm watching D-Rock, and I'm watching Gary, and I'm watching both of them, and they're still not like on their way to the airport, right? <laughs> and then it was like literally like 10 o'clock a.m., and I finally see you guys on your way to the airport. I get off stage, and the dudes are literally walking in from taking maybe a three-minute shower, we sit down on our podcast and you know, afterwards we're just kind of shooting the shit and the podcast is done, which went fantastic by the way. And I go, so what's up? What are you guys are doing after? Because you know, I'm ready to like invite him to my house to come barbecue, <laughs> hang out, have a party, relax. He goes, oh, I'm gonna hop on a plane, I got a red eye. Like, the guy literally woke up this morning, got on a plane, flew here, talked for a little bit, is gonna get on a plane and go back. Like that's legit, people. That's legit, so give him a round of applause for that. Thank you. Take a red eye, land in New York,
drive an hour in New York early morning traffic, take a quick shower, and then go do a 11 hour day, and then hop on a flight and fly to Ghana. Oh. I'm a Pencils of Promise. I'm part of a nonprofit called Pencils of Promise, so I'm gonna go build some schools, check on what we're doing. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Oh. Secondly, I have to say something. I, I, I want to take a, a moment to say thank you to all of you guys because, you know, I know Gary Vee represents something different to each and every one of you guys, but for, for me personally, what it represents is, is a sign of my intense commitment to go all in. Yeah. To go all in, right? And, 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 and when I say that, and when I say that, it's to go all in and all of you and all in in our journey together and all in in the growth that we're about to have. So I'm gonna commit right now, uh, he, he's gonna come back. I'm gonna, on Monday, call the agency and I'm gonna book him again for next year. D-Rock, raise the price. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that now because I know the price is going up. All right? Arbitrage. Yeah? Arbitrage. And then lastly, if everybody gets a damn picture, I want a picture. That's so a good point. let's do a huge selfie, everybody. Sound good, everybody? Give it up for Gary Vee!